Well, thank you all for being here. And we really do have a lot to cover today, and I want to get right into it. Uh, appreciate the vice mayor joining us today. Really important update that we want to share with you today, an update uh, on our organ organizational assessment that took place recently. And we have some partners here that's going to help us do that. I want to say good morning, recognizing that this council has made public safety one of its top priorities. And so that will always be an issue that we will attempt to improve every chance we get. And when I say improve, uh, when we talk about public safety, I'm not sure any of us in this room from the city's perspective is ever satisfied saying that we've achieved because continuous improvement is something that we will always try to strive for when it comes to public safety. Um, we're going to provide this um, update regarding the police department's organizational assessment. I certainly want to thank Robert Layton who's going to share with us here in just a moment and uh, Deputy Chief or Interim Chief Nelson Mosley couldn't make it today, but we really have the best of the best. And um, we have Deputy Chief Hassan Ramza, who is going to represent the department. And uh, Mr. Ramza does a, a very nice job. I have been in several meetings with him, and we're fortunate to have him here today. <laughs> give you just some really quick background before I turn it over to the folks that are going to give you the, the details of all of this. The city manager launched an organizational assessment following the retirement of Chief Norman Williams. As the city manager has said, the assessment will provide the blueprint to move our department forward. It was a six-month organizational assessment that was performed by Wichita State's Hugo Wall School. The assessment was designed to identify critical department issues, improve police community relations, and assist in hiring a new chief. And so all of this is certainly critical to what we're doing as we move forward. Its findings and recommend recommendations were completed and announced in February. For those of the you that need additional reading, there's 227 page report and 11 page executive summary that you can find on uh, wichita.gov. The goals of the assessment were provide research for best practices, Engage internal and external stakeholders on the strengths, concerns, and future direction of the department. Review policies, procedures, and other aspects of the department, and provide recommendations for hiring the next police chief. The assessment has been a collaborative effort and very transparent process. It has included input from 195 employees and 22 stakeholders in meetings. Partnering organizations include the Wichita NAACP, Sunflower Community Action, Wichita Independent Neighborhoods, and the Wichita Crime Commission. The assessment is focused on improving community relations, strengthening community policing, content continuing plans to obtain body cameras for field officers, addressing racial profiling, implementing cultural diversity and sensitivity training, educating the community on the legalities of pretext or patrol stops, developing targeted recruitment and retention efforts to improve departmental diversity, establishing a new community advisory board, which we will talk about in detail, and improving access to information and transparency among other recommendations. Again, this is a true community effort and open process. So today we bring you our first progress report update. And now I will turn it over to Robert Layton, our very capable city manager. Thank you. Um, I w want you to first of all note that he uh, gave me a compliment, the capable yes. city manager this first time in his uh, term as mayor. So I appreciate that. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I do want to start off with a thanks or a couple of thanks. First of all, I want to thank the mayor for his uh, strong support uh, as we have moved forward with the assessment and also with the implementation. Um, also thank the uh, city council uh, who provided us the resources and the encouragement to go ahead with this process. I also want to thank uh, Chief, uh, our interim chief uh, Nelson Mosley who could not be here today uh, because of a previously scheduled trip out of town. 
but he uh, has taken uh, a strong leadership role in moving forward with the implementation of the recommendations that uh, we had uh, in the assessment that was performed by Wichita State. As the mayor noted, this is our first report back to the community on what we've been doing to implement the plan. We had promised uh, at the time that we made the uh, presentation to the mayor and city council that we would not only report back to them uh, at least uh, two or three times a year, but we would report back to the entire community uh, and uh, again stand for any questions and, and also entertain any concerns regarding what we're doing or progress uh, in that regard. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, well, first of all, just a reminder that uh, when we received the report, it was pretty exhaustive. There were over 50 recommendations and I think over 20 projects that came out of those recommendations that we were able to put together into actual tangible work plans. The Probably the first, one of the most important issues had to do with hiring a new police chief. And uh, uh, I had some recommendations from that report, uh, which really represented community recommendations on how to go about the process for hiring a new chief. Uh, I have followed uh, that process to date as it was recommended, and I thought they were good, strong recommendations. So the first thing that we've done uh, is we hired, uh, we, it's a national search. Uh, we've hired uh, the International uh, Association of Chiefs of Police to uh, help coordinate that for us. Uh, June 19th is the deadline for applications. Uh, the uh, consultant has been working hard in terms of not just taking in applications, but then soliciting interest from others who maybe aren't necessarily, weren't necessarily looking for a new position, but uh, would meet the criteria for the community profile and the ch uh, position profile. And so uh, I'm optimistic that we're going to have a strong pool of uh, candidates probably from this area as well as from other parts of the country. Um, I also have asked uh, eight individuals to serve on a uh, citizen advisory panel, which was also recommended by uh, WSU, uh, that we have input from a, uh, a group uh, that could help look through applications, help us get through uh, selection of semifinalists as well as finalist candidates. And then when we get to the point, uh, which I would imagine will happen sometime in July, uh, when we get to that point where we have a final group, uh, we want to have a, f a fairly robust uh, interview process, one that involves stakeholders as well as an opportunity for at least one community forum so that the candidates can be met by the community and address any questions and concerns that uh, our residents have. Uh, second issue that um, I think uh, in terms of the importance and what we heard the most about from the community was the issue of body cameras. And uh, this issue was first discussed when we had the forums uh, related to No Ferguson Here, a uh, group that was, uh, uh, or meetings that were sponsored by a community based uh, group of uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, at that time, the commitment was made that by the end of 2015, we would have uh, body cameras on all of our field personnel, and uh, we're still on target for doing that. Uh, in the first quarter, uh, we did a significant amount of research, we finished up our research. Uh, we are about 95% complete with uh, our policy on the use of cameras, uh, and that will include all kinds of issues in terms of when the cameras should be on, when they should be off, what we're going to do with the data, how it's going to be stored, chain of custody, so to speak, in terms of the videos, and then also the, the touchy issue regarding uh, 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 public uh, disclosure of what comes from the cameras. And so we're working through all that. We are not going to finalize those until we've had a chance to get out with stakeholders, those who have expressed concerns or interest in this issue, and then we'll finalize our policy based on feedback we get uh, from uh, our resident uh, stakeholders. Uh, in the second quarter, we, uh, I think we're going to lock in on the final technology and then select a vendor and then actually start ordering uh, equipment and phasing it in uh, so that, and it's going to take a while when you think that we have over 300 officers that are going to be equipped with body cameras. Uh, it'll take us a while to phase that in to make sure that we've properly trained our officers and that they know how to use the equipment. Um, and uh, again, part of that training is that they understand our expectations for when those cameras are to be utilized. Uh, next item um, of importance, I think, um, again from what we heard in our meetings was this uh, issue of community advisory board and uh, right now we're doing staff work on the well, kind of all the background work necessary for the creation of community advisory board. Uh, the city council will have to actually create that board and so we need an ordinance that uh, provides for that. If you remember the city managers review board is to be a subset of that group so 
the community advisory board will have about 20 residents that will be part of the, the board. Uh, the ordinance that will be approved by the council will uh, also outline the pr a process for receiving nominations. Um, the appointment will uh, take place, uh, actually I'll make the appointments to the advisory board, but they're going to be primarily advisory to the police chief. Uh, the, citizen, uh, the subset, the city manager's review board, will present recommendations initially to the chief and then ult ultimately to me. And they, uh, the uh, group, I think it will be five or seven member group, um, <laughs> will be uh, selected by the citizen uh, advisory board or the community advisory board itself. Um, we hope to have something to the council uh, end of summer, early uh, fall in terms of an ordinance as well as a detailed process for selection of the individuals who will serve. We've, uh, had, we have an implementation team that we've put in place. They had their first meeting in May and uh, hope we'll have the entire board in place uh, sometime in the third quarter of the year, just in time to advise the, the new chief and establish that relationship going forward. Um, the mayor talked about some of the partners we've had in this, and we had a number of community outreach meetings when the uh, uh, report was finalized because we wanted to get continued feedback for the implementation. Uh, just uh, uh, real quickly, we in March 4th, we had a meeting with, uh, that was sponsored by Wichita Independent Neighborhoods. March 10th, we met with NAACP. March 25th, with Sunflower Community Action. And on March 28th, with uh, CORE, which is Community Operations Recovery and Empowerment, Inc. Uh, the last issue I'm going to talk about before I turn this over to uh, Deputy Chief Ramza is the issue about uh, dealing with uh, mental health issues in the field. Uh, and that would be cases that involve uh, our residents who ha are suffering with mental health issues. Uh, and then we obviously will at times be in enforcement issues uh, involving those uh, citizens. Uh, it was important to us, one of the key findings was that we needed to do more to prepare our uh, officers for those situations. Uh, we have, uh, since that report was um, uh, issued, we've had three classes of uh, mental health first aid training, which is the first level of training regarding mental health issues and making our officers familiar with the, uh, those. Uh, 72 officers have been involved in those classes. Uh, to date, we have 114 officers that have successfully completed mental health first aid classes. Uh, our goal is to have 235 attend by the end of 2015, and that's out of our total uh, officer number of about 350. So uh, again, to have a majority of our officers by the end of this year have that first level of training on how to deal with uh, residents who have mental health concerns. And then the more intense training um, is what we call crisis intervention training. And we have currently 82 officers that have been through that level of training. Uh, that's a week long uh, process uh, that they must go through in order to be certified. We have 19 officers that are scheduled to get through uh, upcoming classes. Uh, we are uh, somewhat limited in the number of, of officers that we can have go through that program uh, simply by our provider, uh, ComCare, who's involved in uh, providing that training. But the idea is that uh, uh, by later this summer, we'll have a, a little over 100, we'll have 101 certified officers uh, for crisis intervention training. And we can talk more about what that means uh, at the end after uh, uh, Deputy Chief Ramza uh, has made his comments. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Deputy Chief. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Deputy Chief Hassan Ramza, Investigations Division. Uh, as Mayor Longwell and uh, City Manager Layton mentioned, uh, Interim Chief Nelson Mosley could not be here uh, this morning. So I'm going to continue on with the other portions of this assessment report. I'm going to start with the uh, pretext stop policy. The Wichita Police Department has a comprehensive racial profiling and other bias-based policing policy and vehicle pedestrian stops policy. Uh, this policy addresses stops, detentions, and how supervisors and officers should handle racial profiling complaints. It also includes requirements documenting stops, including searches conducted by officers, and then requiring supervisory review to uh, increase accountability as well as openness. Uh, the Wichita Police Department conducted research and subsequently received recommendations from a legal consultant regarding stop, detention, and search documentation. And as outlined in the Wichita State University assessment, 
Uh, it also outlines tentative policy recommendations uh, for investigative stops and searches during these types of stops. Uh, presentation of the policy recommendations to the Wichita Police Department executive staff is scheduled for mid-June of 2015. Uh, the next topic is the uh, use of force policy. The Wichita Police Department has revised recommendations from a legal consultant for the department's use of force policies and weapons policies. Uh, these recommendations are intended to infuse contemporary constitutional policing policies and guidelines into the use of force weapons policies and regulations. Uh, the law department as well as the Wichita Police Department executive staff have reviewed and given tentative approval to the draft policies. These have also been reviewed by the Fraternal Order of Police and they have provided input into these policies. Uh, language recommendations by the department members during in-service training session were received through May 22, 2015. And uh, staff will review the language recommendations and make the necessary modifications and submit those to the Fraternal Order of Police for review and then finally to the Law Department for review in July of 2015. Now moving on to the recruitment uh, process improvement. Uh, the project plan has been approved and a, a team has been assembled uh, to look at this area. Uh, the first meeting was held during the last week of May. Uh, this project will recommend programs and practices to recruit and retain qualified skilled police force, which also reflects the diversity in the local community. Uh, in the area of communications and public education, uh, this project will review <coughs> department processes, identify areas to improve, and recommend best practices to meet the needs of community members and the news media. The project plan was approved and a team meeting has uh, been held since April 27th. And then to mention some key deliverables in this area include uh, creating a proactive educational campaign uh, with budget estimates to inform the community of standard uh, uh, police practices and procedures with a focus on use of force and uh, pretext stops as first priorities. Uh, as well as identifying methods and resources to provide Wichita Police Department policy and education to our community members. Establishing a standard process for delivering information and education at the community when incidents occur. And also developing a standard method for sharing successes of the department and showcasing those officers who connect with the community members in a positive way. So at this time, this completes our progress report toward implementing the recommendations of the organizational assessment. And we will be happy to respond to your questions. Chief, can you talk a little bit more about the um, racial profiling, the, the changes in the policy, what, what that outlines, what it says that's different than it was before? Well, in that, uh, in that policy, we received some recommendations um, from a legal consultant. Um, they look at use of force uh, as well as looking at um, racial profiling. Uh, we have a, a number of recommendation, recommendations to look at, review that are in progress right now. Um, one of the components of that is looking at the pretext, pretext stop portion of it. And uh, as mentioned a little earlier, more documentation, uh, additional supervisory review to make sure that we have information collected so that when we want to go back and review these incidents, we have those, uh, those in place to be able to do that. So will there be any changes as far as when you stop someone um, to avoid what people are calling racial profiling? Do you want to, you want to, okay. This has been a very important issue to uh, uh, Interim Chief uh, Mosley, and I, I applaud the uh, administrative team for coming up with uh, some issue uh, with a procedure that I think makes a lot of sense in this regard because for so many people pretext stop is associated with the concept of, or the issue of racial profiling so what as I understand it from now on if someone is stopped um, and uh, they do not receive a citation for the that results from that stop they will still receive information, written information from the officer, and that's the procedure they're working through right now, but this is a concept. They'll receive something in writing that indicates why they were stopped. 
Um, so that requires then communication between the officer and the individual uh, so they have a much better idea of what, what was involved in the issue. Um, pretext stops are legal, but again, there is concern that they're uh, maybe misused, uh, not just here, but around the country. And so the chief's uh, response to that is let's be forthright and upfront about why it is that we're stopping someone. Uh, and so that's the one thing I wanted to mention. The other thing is they're currently reviewing the training that we give uh, for uh, uh, bias-free, uh, what's, it, what's it actually called? It's bias-based bias -based policing. And looking at how we can involve community uh, members more in some of that training so that people can understand uh, the impact of a stop and the, cons and the issue of racial profiling and what that means from a resident standpoint. So again, I think uh, it's a matter of education of our officers as well as better communication with our residents. Are those still right now or are they actually? No, those are actually uh, being implemented by the department. And then back to the body cameras, did you say every police officer would have one by the end of 2015? I did, yes. And then I thought there was some sort of June date as well. Is that when they're going to start being handed out? or? Um, what we'll do in uh, June, by uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be June or July, but by we will by sometime this midsummer we'll have selected a vendor and started the order process. So, none, when do you think the first ones will begin? Yeah. Do you have any idea? Uh, we're we're in the process right now. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we're in the process right now of uh, looking over the uh, the bid for those uh, those cameras right now. There's a pro we have currently have 60 that the department currently has in use right now, and with the uh, looking at a purchase of an additional 428 uh, for um, all of our officers, and so uh, right now that that's on in progress, uh, ongoing right now. Um, in terms of when that's going to when those the first cameras roll out, we expect to sometime in uh, late summer, uh, uh, early fall, latest. And then those 60 that you already have, are they in the force already? Or are you holding on to them until you get the rest of them? Uh, those have been in use. You mentioned possible changes in the use of force policy. Are there going to be uh, changes implemented, and what will those be? Uh, right now, those are still under under review. Uh, there's a number of components that we're looking at. Uh, in regards to that policy, we have a, uh, currently have a use of force policy in place right now. But again, based on some information we received from our legal consultant, um, there are some other recommendations that we need to implement. And so it, it's pretty much a very, as you can imagine, a large scale policy that we're looking at. Chief, can you go into specifics when you say there are some recommendations you're looking at? Can you tell us what those are? Um, I, I can't get into those specifically because there are a number of recommendations that are in, involved here to look at. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, documentation, um, supervisory review, um, looking at uh, and providing training uh, to officers in regards to that. So there's, there's a number of recommendations in several areas in regard to that. So it's, it's, it's a very comprehensive uh, review in that regard. We'll be in a better position next time we report to talk about that. Okay. And, and just going back to the racial profiling, just so I'm clear, the, the changes that you were talking about, Bob, the officers are already using those? So they're handing you, if they don't give you a ticket when they pull you over, they are giving you something in writing that says, I pulled you over because... Right. No, that, that, is, uh, that is the recommendation uh, that we're looking at right now. Uh, that is not occurring at this moment, okay. okay? But that's part of this uh, part of this process. Okay, and that will be up for approval July 15. Well, correct. Okay. I'm posing a question about the community advisory board. I know you said that there will be 20 people that are on there. Some of them will be put on, I guess, by you, some by the police chief, some by city council. You said also some residents might have some say in this. Can you talk a little bit about that? Process? Yeah, the, I'll, I'll appoint all 20, uh, but I'll have input from the mayor and council members and also from the police chief because ultimately they're going to be working with the chief and so we want to make sure there's good, obviously a good relationship there um, and that we have the kind of mix that he wants in terms of getting community uh, input. The, but it will all start with a nomination process um, and that will be incorporated into the draft uh, ordinance that we bring to the council for consideration will outline all of that. 
other questions it merits your press conference you did well yeah. thanks right. thank you any other questions thank you, thank you. oh i did have one more Maybe you know, Mayor. Um, when, when will the new chief, is there a deadline for the new chief to be put in place? Yeah, um, we're, we're hoping that the process will be completed and someone will, be a, someone will be appointed at least by the end of August. In a perfect world, end of August, early uh, September, I'd like to have them on board. But again, it, what I've told people is if we have to take a little more time to make sure it's a deliberative process, I'd rather do that than to rush through and, and meet some arbitrary deadline of end of August. Can you say how many applicants you have so far? Not right now because I don't know. Um, the consultant is taking all of that information, all of the applicants and resumes, and um, then they'll report back to me after the deadline. And when, when was the deadline? Uh, June 12th. June 12th. And how much is the consultant costing? Um, I, I, I think it's thirty-five thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. I believe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Robert Layton and Deputy Chief Ramza for uh, today's press conference. One thing I will mention again, because I think it is very important uh, when we talk about the policies that the council will need to approve. Many of those in the middle of July. Uh, as mentioned in pretext stops, every single pretext stop will will be able to quantify now, and so I think that's a big change that that should be mentioned, and so it is a matter of accountability. So, thank you all. Appreciate you coming, and uh, and now you have another question. I'm sorry, you said June 12th. Earlier you said the deadline was June 19th. I'm sorry, 19th. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. And 35,000 for the company. Yes. Did we cover everything? Don't want to miss anything. How's the River Fest? Um, River Fest has been, uh, I don't know the numbers, but I can tell you it's been very successful. I had an update, just a, a very quick briefing from uh, one of our police department folks the other day. Been very successful from their standpoint. We have not had any major issues. In fact, the numbers are dramatically down from years past. The weather has been perfect. Obviously, I'm a big part of making sure the weather's been perfect, and uh, we've just been very lucky. The timing couldn't have been better this year. As you know, we've moved it because of a number of reasons, one of them occasionally being weather, and we were spot on this year. The weather has truly cooperated and been great. If we would have kept it in its previous time slot, we all know uh, there are days when we'd have been totally rained out and we'd been wearing parkas. And even as cold as Saturday got a little bit, the, the weather's been very cooperative. So fantastic community event that I, I think that has been fully embraced by all of us again this year. And it's, uh, I can't say enough about Mary Beth and her group and their job to carry off such a terrific community event. So it's been, it's been great. Thanks.